Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of This Week in Magic Online Finance. My name is Chaz Andres, and we're not going to talk about the news this week because I'm still traveling. Do not worry, I will have movers and shakers for you again next week along with the news, but today I wanted to devote some time to talking about the overall state of the MTGO market. Is it time to buy? Is it time to sell? Does that change depending on which format we're talking about? Let's find out together. First, let's talk a little standard. Now, we covered this topic in greater detail last week, but just to recap a little, set redemption is having a major effect on the standard market at the moment. In fact, a lot of sets are dropping by up to 70 or 80% once they pass out of the set redemption window. This theory is going to have its first major test once Guilt of Ravnica falls out of the set redemption window and we see what happens to Arclight Phoenix, but one thing is undeniable, and that is that Arena has taken a huge bite out of the standard market on MTGO. In fact, at this point, we can safely say that standard isn't even the biggest driver of standard prices. That would be set redemption. At this point, though, at least standard is predictable and cyclical. The overall format price is more or less stabilized around the 200 ticket mark, increasing a little when new sets are released and dropping a little when sets fall out of the set redemption window. The key thing here to remember is that you don't want to be holding expensive standard cards through set redemption, which is more impactful even than set rotation, and that makes it a little bit hard to, you know, have expensive standard decks on MTGO at this point. Here's the thing though, there really aren't any expensive standard decks on MTGO right now. Taking a look at the metagame, I can't see a single deck that's more than 90 tickets at the moment, most of them are under 40, some of them are like 5 tickets, so you can buy some standard decks for the price of a cheeseburger and any standard deck for the price of, you know, a nice dinner out for two. So what should we be doing about standard at the moment? Honestly, probably not much. Yeah, if you can identify the key card in the set, you should go in on it. People did make bank on Arclight Phoenix and Kaya, and there are some cards in standard sets that are going to be worth a lot of money, mostly due to set redemption, but also because of modern play, and if you can find that expensive card that's expensive because of modern and set redemption, you are going to make some money, but otherwise probably not. And the other way I'd suggest interacting with standard is buy one of those 30 or 40 ticket decks and have fun. Don't worry about if the deck goes to zero or not. If you're getting tons and tons of play out of it, you know, not everything has to be a profit thing. Sometimes you can just buy a deck and have fun and wish it well. Let's move over to Modern now, where I feel really good about the future of the format on Magic Online. The only thing that could really ruin its day is if it shows up on Arena, but I see no signs of Wizards of the Coast implementing Modern on that client. Yes, it will happen at some point, but they haven't even said they want to do it. They certainly haven't said they're trying to do it. It's probably going to take a lot of the community sort of clamoring for it to happen, and even then it's going to be a while. So that is a far future problem, not a 2019 or probably even 2020 problem. I also don't see any imminent signs of Modern either dying or being replaced by a new Returnal format. Even if WotC does introduce a new Eternal format, and I'd really like them to do it. Sets like Modern Horizons indicate that Modern is here to stay, and the community seems to agree. Paper prices have been going up for months, the MTGO Modern Index has jumped by about a third since it bottomed out in December, and people are playing Modern. They're playing it casually, they're playing it competitively, and as long as that continues to happen, Modern cards will be worth a lot of money on Magic Online. But what's the Modern Index going to do over the short term? Well, Modern Horizons drops on June 14th, and that tells me that the month of June is going to be the best time to sell Modern this year. See, the couple of weeks before the set release are going to be full of exciting previews and cards are going to spike as new archetypes are re-examined and people get really, really excited that maybe it's goblins or maybe it's elves or maybe it's death and taxes or who knows what the next great deck is going to be and everything's going to go up in price. Then there'll be a couple of weeks of brewing and tournament results and people taking a look at, you know, what they need to complete their decks and cards like Jason Fetchlands are going to go up and up in price as people realize, oh crap, I need these staples in order to build this new deck that looks so exciting. To answer your next question, yeah, it's absolutely worth doing some quick flips into Modern Horizons hype. Now, I'm recording this video a few weeks before it's actually going up, so I don't have any current numbers for you, and any cards I pick as exciting specs may have already gone up too high by the time you're watching this. So instead, I recommend going to mtggoldfish.com, 
clicking on the Dex tab at the top of the page, and then going down to Format Staples. This gives you a really, really good sense, in fact, an entire list of the most played cards in Modern. And then take a look at what people are playing with. For example, Scalding Tarn is played in 25% of all decks in Modern right now, so if you don't have your copy, you should probably grab it before it goes bananas due to Modern Horizons. Now, even though I think it might be smart to buy into Modern now, I think it's equally smart to sell your extra Modern cards in June. See, summer and fall, they tend to be pretty weak parts of the calendar for modern overall. Summer is a weak time of year for magic, people are outside, they're not inside playing cards, and prices tend to drop across the board. Fall tends to be a rebound, but mostly just for standard. There's set rotation, a new expansion, and everyone's super excited for that, they're not really paying attention to modern. Modern season usually happens in the spring, March, April, May. This year, I think will peak in June, thanks to Modern Horizons. So I would sell your Modern cards right around that Modern Horizons release date and then look to buy back in again in September or October. Let's move over to Legacy now, which so far on MTGO in 2019 has behaved more or less exactly like Modern. It also bottomed out in December, also has rebounded by about a third over the past few months. And this is primarily because it tanked too hard due to arena panic. People just thought that their MTGO collections were about to be useless, they sold everything, but turns out modern legacy events still fire all the time on MTGO because, you know, there's no alternative place to play these formats online yet, and there won't be for a while. Now, even though legacy and modern have behaved more or less the same over the past few months, I expect a divergence to be coming up soon. See, there is no Legacy Horizons. The big event for Modern is coming up in mid-June, but the big event for Legacy just happened. It was the Grand Prix in Niagara over the weekend. So because of that, I think you should probably start selling your Legacy specs now. The summer and fall are probably going to be just as lethargic for Legacy as they will be for Modern for all of the same reasons, so this could very well be Legacy's high point on the calendar. Now, there's a big overarching question that affects both Modern and Legacy that we haven't explicitly discussed yet. And the question is this. We know both Modern and Legacy cards have gained quite a bit on MTGO over the past several months. But why? Is it due to the normal seasonal trends and machinations, the same ones that have been affecting the paper index? For example, in modern, paper prices have been climbing for the past few months as well. Or is it something different? Is it simply that these cards are recovering from their arena crash back in December and they haven't hit their new baseline yet? Now, if it's the former, which is what I expect is going on, then you can expect modern and legacy prices to flatten out and maybe even drop a bit this summer and fall. Pretty much that's what I've been predicting in this video so far, and that's what I expect to happen. But it is also possible that we just haven't hit that new baseline yet. And if that's the case, we could see modern and legacy prices continue to increase throughout 2019. After all, prices are still a lot cheaper overall than they were in 2018. So if that's what's happening, then we might see continued growth through the entire rest of the year. Overall, I recommend hedging your bets at least a little bit. Remember back in December when I told you not to panic because you thought that MTGO was circling the drain, I told you that wasn't happening, and prices have gone up since then? Well, I was right about that, and I hope that I'm right about this. I think it's worth being at least a little bit conservative right now and taking advantage of some of these nice prices while people are still feeling optimistic about MTGO. Because there's another thing we haven't really talked about in this video, which is that at some point, some piece of news is going to come out about Arena that's going to cause everyone to panic again. It may be, you know, actually relevant, it may not be, but you know how people get about this stuff, and if I'm really unlucky, that piece of news came out, you know, between when I recorded this video and when it's going up, and it's rendering the entire thing obsolete, and <sighs> I'm not gonna think about that. Deep breaths. Calmness. Yes. Anyway, I think compromise is a good thing. I recommend selling your legacy specs right about now, selling your modern specs in June, holding on to a nice part of your collection, and making sure you have the tickets to buy back in again when the next crash inevitably happens. And that's all I've got for you this week. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back next Monday morning with Movers and Shakers on another episode of This Week in Magic Online Finance.